Welcome back, everybody. We have Chance Patrick's with Iowa. I, Chance Patrick's. There's two of you here. <laughs> Chance Patrick with Iowa's Great Outdoors joining us here this morning. And you have uh, lots to talk about. Big catches, mountain lions. It's exciting swampy. Stuff I have been in the bored. Iowa Great Outdoors. It's what? It's swampy out there. Swampy. It's so flooded. I've been bored. <laughs> you know, so. It hasn't been the best time to get out and enjoy it. So I've just been sitting around. You know, I talked about the rain gets me rested back up. I am rested and ready to go. <laughs> You're raring to go now. So I keep hearing on the news about this mountain lion. Right. You know, I'm all about chasing cougars around town ah. while I'm bored. <laughs> so this mountain lion, everybody keeps spotting. Now it's getting kind of out of control. People are spotting things They're spotting that aren't things there, that aren't that mountain aren't. lions. That Correct. aren't mountain lions. You know, it's it's been one of those deals every time I hear it go across the radio. I want to know. I mean, I sit in a tree a lot, and the last thing I want is to have a mountain lion above me. So I'm kind of like tracking this thing around town and kind of seeing what it's doing. And it's out during the day. The last kind of reports I've heard, it's been running through some people's backyards. So I get a lot of messages from homeowners that are nervous that we know you ha know how to deter animals from being in our yards, coyotes. How do we get rid of a mountain lion? I have no clue how to get rid of a mountain lion. And that was footage of an actual mountain lion that yeah. was taken from a house uh, camera, uh, just kind of showing you what was happening there. Obviously, a concerned uh, uh, homeowner out there just checking to see what's going on. He came out in a hurry, there. didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he did. I Last thing I would have done was peeked out the window, not what, ran what out. What is it, do you think, that draws them into that, those areas? Is it other small animals? Is it We're you know, trash right now. and food and stuff? It's their, We're flooded. their habitat is getting. So, I was good. Who doesn't want to come to Iowa? Even animals, you know, armadillos. You know, armadillos are getting more known to be in Iowa. If you, really? Yeah, there was one out by Southridge Mall. That, so that probably came in on a semi. It was probably tucked up from somewhere down south in a semi. Finally hit that one bump, knocked it out in the road. That, that's what I'm thinking happened there. Okay. So the mountain lions now. Iowa's weather's changing so much. So we're going to start getting those new animals migrating over this way. The mountain lions are a thing that just keeps blowing me away because mm. I wonder how they are getting here. But should we really be this concerned? Like I, no. I, I hear it on the headlines and I'm <laughs> and, and there's some people freaking uh, where I'm like, is it really that big a deal? I mean, it is part of nature. We're going to experience yeah. some of that every once in a while. But should I be scared or what, what's your It's one of those animals that is more scared of us and doesn't want to even see us. So with all the flooding, it's pushed probably out of, out of its home. Now it's hungry. You know, where are the deer going and stuff? It's not as easy for them to get deer and rabbits like it does in the wild. So it's going to move into town because it's hungry. Mm -hmm. The things we need to think about is bringing our animals in at night, even if you put them in your garage overnight. This, this animal is out looking for food. Mm -hmm. And that's just how life is. If I was to approach that animal now out walking with my animal, my dog, okay, safety of us is first. Um, we all love our animals, but if this thing is there and it's coming, I, I just get away from it. It's gonna try to get away from you at the same time. I know it's been seen a lot in neighborhoods. So if it's been spotted in your neighborhood, think about your animal and bring them in, protect them. Okay, I don't think it's just gonna be roaming around, cleaning neighborhoods out. It's right. trying to get away, it's trying to get back to home. So don't freak out about it. I mean, if you do see it, let the authorities know and uh, Move on. Because sometimes it, we get the um, advice that we shouldn't run from them because that encourages them to chase. Chase. Don't yeah. run away, but like ease out of the. Mm -hmm. What I mean by run away is ease out of it. Get up out of Let it do its thing and get out, get down the road. Um, I, I did talk to one lady that it was in her backyard and she said, What do I do if it comes back? I said, Well, call the authorities and don't go out trying to get pictures of it. You know, snap a picture through the window. She's like, Well, sure. I can't get a clear picture. Don't go out after a picture. <laughs> Leave yeah. it alone and let's get, that let's, get it at, let's get it out of town and, and let it get back to where it belongs. We're gonna have them. It's Iowa. It's beautiful. Everybody loves it, even in the animals. So with all the flooding going on right now and pushing animals out, it's pushing animals out of the river right now. All the big fish are up in the flooded areas. Randy Conivore from Atumwaya, we had him on the show last year with a world record big headed carp. Right. 112 pounds. Okay. Wow. Just shot a 120 pound going for the new world record. It's the first time it's, Look been, at that. it's been announced. So the water is getting a lot of things out of some crevices. <laughs> it's getting all the big things, yeah. <laughs> oh my. So Randy, Randy shot that with his bow, bow fishing. Really? So not only did he have the world record at 112, he just broke his own record with 120. 20. 
Can you imagine a 120 pound fish on no, the end of an arrow? No, I saw wow. that picture online and I almost didn't think it was real. <laughs> so it was so, so big. So last time he, he had a broken wrist on the 112 pounder. So it was even more of a challenge. It pulled him down the bank and took him for a nice little ride. This one here, he was 100% healthy, ready to go. And he set out on a mission. I seen two days before that. He said, the big heads are running. And I said, they're in trouble because Randy's good. <laughs> and talk, talk about the fishing then in all of the other areas where kind of some of the hot spots and, you know, are they still accessible or are they have, are you having to kind of reroute where everybody's going to catch? So I went to go get us some bullheads to cook. Well, to get to the pond that I bullhead fish, I have to have a boat to get to the pond because it's all flooded out now. Mm -hmm. The rivers are, high water is good. A lot of people think with the high water, it's really murky. It's not ideal for fishing. And it's really, it's actually good because those fish now are coming out looking for things to eat. The water's not as deep, so they're, they're cruising looking for food. So high water can sometimes be good to catch big fish because they're up now closer. Um, we're going to do some fishing. Yeah. But you just want to be safe. I imagine you can also yeah. have a little higher currents and things that you don't realize are in the water if it's a little bit higher than it's normally It's the debris is, is going to be bad right. here real soon. And uh, if you're out in the river, I won't go out in the river when it's high like it is right now. I kind of focus more on the back waters on okay. like middle rivers. Uh, some of the smaller ones are dynamite right now. So it sounds like if you want to deter and just kind of be smart, don't leave food or things that uh, might attract animals mm -hmm. that are making their way and just trying to feed themselves this time of year with all the flooding that's happening and bringing other animals. It's pushing into everything to the city. Bring your pet food in. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, pushing that. everything to the city. You know, just kind of make your house uh, anti-mountain lion. <laughs> you know, bring your animals in. Protect your animals. Bring them in. Even if you just have to put them in the garage, um, you know, if it's during the day you're worried about it, bring them in the garage, leave some fans going, and maybe uh, crack a window. Um, just protect your animals because that's all that animal's doing up in the neighborhoods is looking for something to eat. It doesn't want to come snuggle. It wants out of our town and back where it belongs, but it's flooded. Yeah. And is so. there certain times of the day that they're seeing them more often than others? Daytime, nighttime? I've heard so many different oh. stories. I've had probably 25 messages about this thing. So, really? yeah, and every time I try to get in that area of the neighborhood and I kind of take a drive through there, just, you know, I, I would like to see it. You know, I was changing and I'm seeing more and more different animals that we don't usually see. And that's one I haven't seen yet, so I'm kind of intrigued. Intrigued by it. Okay, well, despite yeah. the flooding and all the rain that we've had recently, still opportunities yeah. to get out and enjoy Iowa's great outdoors. Just watch out. There might be some parks or trails that are flooded. The love this trails time are year. flooded out over by um, Isaac Walton League Waterworks area. Mm hmm. It's all gone. It's, right. out, it's underwater. Find some new spots. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> it's a good time to explore. Go on an adventure and get some new locations. All right, so people want to reach out to you and say, hey, maybe I need to find I've some new spots. I've seen a mountain lion. Or <laughs> I've seen a mountain lion. What do I do? Uh, uh, people can always reach out to you and, and yeah. get some advice. Yeah, find me on Facebook at Iowa's Great Outdoors or Chance Patrick, and I respond. As soon as I get that message, I'm on it. Put some so, notices on where like, some good fishing is going on. There's a lot of good that. fishing, you know, yeah. Hooper. There's a lot. Yeah. Get out and explore. That's the thing. That's how we find good fishing spots is by exploring. Absolutely. So. And remember to stay safe at the same time. All right. You're